salt. Most of us like the taste of it, and our bodies need a small amount of salt to function properly. But most of us eat far too much of it. The recommended daily maximum is 6 grams, but the average Briton consumes more than 9 grams of salt every day. So why do we eat so much of it? What problems are we storing up for ourselves? And what can we do about it? Warwick ICAST has been talking to Professor Francesco Capuccio from the Warwick Medical School about the latest research. At the end of 2006, uh, WHO gathered a number of experts in Paris to discuss the evidence linking salt intake to the epidemic of cardiovascular disease in the world with intent not only to review the evidence itself, but to try to agree a specific guidelines to be adopted worldwide to help different member states and countries to contribute to the reduction of salt intake at the population level in order to reduce the burden of cardiovascular disease. And what were your findings? The findings were that the evidence linking salt to cardiovascular disease is overwhelming and has been like that for quite a few years. What was less clear and a bit discouraging, when we went to look at the number of countries which have set specific targets for their populations in relation to salt intake, we found out that there were quite a variety of measures around the world with some disappointing results in some countries. When we went further to see how many of those countries who had set targets were, had already implemented some strategies of public health level to change the level of salt intake, uh, disappointing we found that very few had programs in place to address the issue. Now recently there was a separate study by Harvard University which proved a link between high salt intake and cardiovascular disease. Presumably you weren't too surprised by the findings? No, we were not surprised at all. In fact the missing link between the salt story in relation to, to the cardiovascular disease was a final proof that when you allocate people to different levels of salt intake and you follow them up for many years, you can show a reduced risk of developing cardiovascular disease in those having a lower salt intake. That if you randomize individuals to a lower salt intake, you keep it on for many years, and then you follow them up to see how much cardiovascular disease they develop over the years, they found that those who had been randomized to receiving a lower levels of salt intake similar or what we would um, suggest in our guidelines, that group was experiencing a 30% less strokes and heart attacks compared to those who were keeping on the same level of salt intake that they were used to before. So let's have a look at some common foodstuffs. Talk us through the labelling. How do you read the labels? And should you be looking for sodium or salt? Well, that's very important to appreciate. The substance we eat, the white stuff, is salt, which is made of sodium chloride. But very often what we find in the traditional labeling still referring to sodium in terms of quantitative content of items. And you can find, for instance, in labels some referring to sodium per 100 grams or per uh, measure of the backpack. This one is 22 grams per pack. For instance, here we have that this particular pack of crisps contains 1.4 grams of sodium per 100 grams of crisps. We have devised a system which helps you relate the saltiness to something very obviously for us. For instance, if I were to ask you, would you drink Atlantic seawater, you probably, your answer probably is... Wouldn't particularly want to. You wouldn't particularly want it. Now, that has, on average, one gram of sodium per hundred grams of water, which is one per hundred, mm, one mm, percent. Mm, mm, mm. Now, as I look at these crisps now, they say 1.4 grams per hundred. In other words, these crisps are 40% saltier than seawater. We have um, the oat and bran flakes, part of our breakfast all the time, usually also gathered as a very healthy breakfast. Don't we? Then we look at the sodium, and they say sodium per 100, which I suggest you always look at sodium per 100, so you can compare apples with pears. So we'll have a 0 0.9 grams of sodium per 100 grams of cornflakes. Now 0.9 is almost as salty as seawater. Now one of the best ways of reducing your salt intake, presumably, is to look at the kind of bread that you eat. Yes. To give you an idea, loaves of bread can vary between 
one gram of salt per 100, which is seawater content, to about, the average would be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and this is probably the, the standard content of uh, sodium uh, in loaf of bread. And we would recommend, in reality, to, to look for bread which would have about 0 0.3, 0 0.35 grams of sodium per 100 grams. Now here we have a product that's aimed at children. Should children worry about their salt intake? I think children are particularly vulnerable to the effect of high salt, high sugar and high fat content of convenience food, in particular snacks. In fact, snacks in children, for instance, here we have a snack that can be eaten in one or two portions, would have 0.6 grams of sodium per 100, uh, and that would be regarded as a highly salted. Imagine children um, don't weigh as much as adults. So the totality of the intake of salt for children is as much as the adults, but they're much, much smaller, so the effect could be compounded in them. Why do manufacturers put so much salt in food? This is a very interesting uh, concept. To be very brief is for profit. Could be for profit, particularly because as you eat salt, you will drink more, you get thirsty. And what you drink or what the world drinks most of the time is soft drinks. In addition, I think salt is very addictive, particularly for children. The more salt you eat, the less saltiness you feel in your buds, in your taste buds, so more salt you need. So it's a training to addiction. So as a society, what's the answer? The answer is we have a huge responsibility to make sure that we don't produce epidemics of chronic disease. That's why I think in the latest editorial of the BMJ, myself and others have called to go beyond the voluntary regulations of the industry in helping implementing low salt strategies. But since the last 25 years, progress has been made, but not enough. I think the carrot and stick rule will apply where perhaps some legislation would be necessary to help the industry come towards the need of the population.